Hello YouTubers! This channel is all about RV living, traveling, and do-it-yourself projects. Please hit the subscribe button below. Hello YouTube! Today I want to uh, share a little bit of the theories I have on these batteries when it comes to charging them. Um, and I want to show you that it is possible to create a solar system uh, that will maintain the charge level of your batteries. A lot of uh, battery failures and system failures due to poor design and combining the battery, the solar charger, the solar panels, and your usage uh, of the the system and if you don't plan it properly it will fail if you do plan it properly it will provide you with uh, power whenever you need it without charging from a external source or running a generator so <clears throat> my theory is on these batteries especially since they're not new and they are different is that uh, it's best to low charge balance them and what that means is you charge them fully up as I did you run them completely down to the level that you're never going to exceed you let them rest and whatever differences in cell voltage at that point when you charge it up the battery is healthy those differences in soul cell voltages should remain the same throughout the life of the battery uh, that's my theory other people have a similar theory a lot of the uh, in fact E West out in California that that converts uh, sports cars to electric cars uh, they totally believe in low balance charging the batteries So, it just so happens, since I've already done this and I am putting this video together, uh, my batteries all remain balanced when I took them down and they're within two thousandths of a volt uh, difference from the highest cell to the lowest cell after I did the charge uh, with the solar panel. One thing nice about solar charging batteries is typically you're going to have a low amperage charge, which these batteries love. My charge con uh, controller, if it was connected to more to the maximum number of solar panels, the max amperage you could put out would be 30 amps. And 30 amps is on the low part of the scale. Uh, since I have 100 batteries in parallel in each of my cells, that's equivalent to about 3.3 amps charge per cell, which is well below what I tested them at, at 1 amp charge and 1 amp discharge. And if you watch the load test, I never exceeded 0.52 amp draw during that entire uh, low test and I tested every item in my uh, RV so let's get started and take a look at what we got here well the next day after I did the load test I went ahead and turned on the solar panel and it was a very heavy overcast rainy day and uh, my house my driveway sits on the north side of my house. It's a two-story house. And even in the summer, I do not get direct sunlight on that RV top where the solar panel is mounted. <clears throat> but um, I can still get 300 watts on a real sunny day. And that's the reason it's important when you're selecting your solar panels, if you can afford it to purchase a high voltage panels rather than your low voltage like these 12 volt panels 
there's a big difference and I'll discuss that in the solar design section uh, of videos that I'm, I'm preparing to start to do uh, but this first day at the end of the day um, with it charging only a one and a half amps which is great for this low balance charge um, the voltage on the battery got up to about 26.9 so the next morning I checked each cell value and it was at 3.85 all seven of them and my multimeter only goes to the hundred so um, that's I wish it would go to the thousands but it doesn't but uh, the next morning I came out about nine o'clock I'd left the solar panel on over the night overnight so it'd start charging next morning and even though it was overcast, it wasn't raining. It was a pretty clear day. It just a very cloudy day. And most of the day it was around 200 uh, watts. A couple of times I went out there and I saw that it was up to around 250. But by the time the sun went down, the battery was fully charged up to uh, 28 volts. Well, this is the cell checker I'm going to be using. Uh, this is definitely not a review. I haven't had it long enough to uh, review it, to recommend it, but this is the one I'm using right now. It is fairly accurate. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's as accurate as my uh, multimeter because it only goes to the hundreds. This one goes to the thousands. Um, and uh, it, can test every cell as well as it has the ability to tell you the difference between the highest cell and the lowest cell. Cell one, cell two, cell three, cell four, cell five, cell six, And cell seven next I'm gonna hit the mode button it's gonna give me the total battery voltage and if you push it again you get the difference between the highest cell and the lowest cell so there's three hundredths volt difference between the two cells the highest cell is number five at 3.96 and the lowest cell is 3.92 So that's how that cell checker works. It does have a balancing feature on it. Uh, it's useless on a battery this size. Now, after I um, purchased the one on the right from Amazon for $12, I saw an ad in my email for one that looks identical to it on AliExpress for $4. Um, but in this Chinese stuff, even those two things look alike, they rarely are so uh, I might order this for a backup uh, this one from Aliexpress and just see if it is the same but um, I will do a review on uh, this uh, tester after a couple of months because uh, I don't want to say yeah I like it and then the sucker craps out on me so that's the end of this uh the battery charged up and um, i think it's pretty healthy and it's been sitting for about a week since i did the load test so uh, because i had to wait on the cell checker so i hope y'all like this video uh it's not a lot of information here but there's a little bit um, please leave the comments down below and until next time check you later